And here we go. Welcome everybody to the Keith Barker channel. It is great to see you. I've got a bunch of exciting content to pack right here in this live demonstration regarding getting new gear. And if you are or somebody's old gear, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So if you're buying some older gear off of eBay or wherever and you get it in, there's several challenges you have to overcome so you can start using that gear. So recently, as in earlier today, <laughs> I got, uh, I ordered five of these. These are 3560s C's. They're compact little eight ports. Uh, these have 100 megabit ports and they also, it also has one gigabit port as well. And so I got some, they're really cheap on eBay and they have no fans. So they get a little bit warm. They have these cool power fins here, but they, uh, they don't have a blowing motor or a blowing fan. And so I haven't measured the actual voltage they use, but I'll check that out later. Anyway, so let's imagine that you and I just bought some gear. We got it in, we plugged it in, we connect a console port to it right there, and we say, great, let's go ahead and start configuring this. Well, unfortunately, a lot of gear that you're gonna get has a password, <laughs> an enable secret that's set, and you have to either log in or supply the enable secret, and if you don't know it, we're gonna need to do password protection. Now, password protection is like a last pass, generate password recovery, so we can break the password and get into the physical gear, wipe out the old config and start with the new. So I'd like to walk you through as much time as I have time for how we could do that and also how we could upgrade the software. So if the version that you bought is not quite the right version that you need, uh, there's some possibilities that there is an updated version and I'll, I'll take a closer look at that too with you as well. All right, so boom, here's this device. It is a 3560. Uh, this is just a, <laughs> I, I have a fond spot in my heart for the 3560. Um, and this is just a little one that's a lot of fun. So this is one that I just got out of the box. I've got actually five of them. I've got a couple more there. And let's go from soup to dessert getting it going. So to do that, let me get a cable. So here is my console cable, the rollover cable that goes from my USB port. I have a USB version and I'm plugging that into the console port. Boom, all right. Now, to do password recovery, here's what I did. <laughs> Let me bring up a full screen for this. What I did was I went to Cisco's site. Oh, I actually just did a Google search for, um, hmm, maybe, I, maybe I closed it. Let me do it right here. Uh, Cisco password recovery. So you do a search for Cisco password recovery, and I'll go ahead and put my face up here. Um, it's really pretty straightforward. You just go to Cisco's site, and you look for your gear, uh, whatever model you're using, and it has walk through step-by-step -step procedures on how to do it. So it's slightly different for each device, but the concept is the same. You, there's a password on this box, and we wanna go ahead and get rid of the password so we can go ahead and start having access to it. So on this device, which is gonna vary a little bit based on your model, but on a 3560 with the console cable plugged in so I can see it. Also, let me, let me bring up a console port, uh, a session, so we can actually see the output there. So I've got an entry here for console. So anything exciting that happens will show up right here. Great, all right, so that's in play. And I've got power somewhere. And the procedure for this bad boy is uh, as you, before you plug in the power, there's a little mode button right here that cycles between the LED indicators for link and so forth. So if you need to hold and press that down while you, and then plug in the power. And what I'm going to do is based on the documentation, it said about 15 seconds or until the status light changes. I'm just gonna keep my eye on that little status light. I'm still holding down the mode, the mode button. And, and as soon as it changes significantly, ah, oh, there it goes. It just blinked amber and there you go. It changed, it's blinking faster. I'm gonna, press, I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna set this over to the side. Stay right there. And now let me go ahead and show you the screen. So, oh, uh, oh, I missed it. I missed it. All right, well, we're gonna do it again. So let me go ahead and do that one more time. I'm going to, I must not have held it quite long enough. Let me bring my, so I'm going to unplug the power. Hence the uh, icon stop, the it stop loading the image. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down the, mode button this time again and plug it in. So how'd the, how'd the, the uh, premiere go today? It was great. Uh, Keith held down the mode button while he plugged in power to his little 3560 switch and he waited not just uh, till the LEDs changed, but he also waited a, bit, a little bit longer. 
So my son's also calling me. Let me bring him on to the stream with us. Hey, Riley, how are you? Hey, what's up? Hey, before you say too much, I've got you on the live stream. I'm okay. doing I'm doing the recording for the live stream. So anyway, say hi to everybody. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> All right, that's my uh, my wonderful 21 year old son. Can I catch you catch up with you in about 40 minutes? Will that work? Oh, no, no, it's all good because we were waiting for this thing to boot. <laughs> all right, talk oh, to you later. Yeah. Love you, man. Yeah. Bye. All right. So, uh, oh, and the status light has changed to solid, which was the instructions. It said hold down the button until it goes solid, and there we go, the, the status changed. So great. All right. So now I'm going to put this bad boy over here again. I got a little impatient with the hold down time. And let's, uh, let's configure this. So if we do a, a DIR, and there's our flash, if we do a uh, DR, DIR flash, the, the, sorry, you can't do it, you have to uh, start it up. So let's do a FLASH underscore init. Okay, now the flash file system is initiated, or it will be in a few moments. And then we'll go ahead and do a, let's do a DIR flash. And this is risky because this is somebody's used gear. <laughs> and with that used gear, that config.txt file right here, that's their, that's their configuration. That's the startup config that's saved in NVRAM. When you do a copy run start, there it is. So if we did a more flash colon config.txt, I'm, I'm going to stop it right there with the, oh, oh, nobody look. I'm moving that off screen. <laughs> Because I don't know what company had this. I don't know if they're. I don't. I'm sure they didn't want their full configuration shown for the world. So I'm just gonna uh, have that I'll scroll off the page, including the warning banner. Great. Bring it back over. <laughs> there you go. No harm, no foul. All right. So uh, what we want to do is dar flash. I'm not so interested in retaining their older config, but what I do want, I want this uh, multi-layer switch, this 3560, when it boots. I want it to not have the previous config, including the previous password. So I'm going to do a rename of that config.txt file. And that's just a rename. I'm, I'm tabbing it out, but that's not working here. OK, here we go. You can do this. Rename flash colon config.txt to flash colon uh, old config. Txt. I'm going to keep it around so I can, so I can look at it later. Um, if we do a dir flash, and it wants a little colon there, dir flash colon, there we go. All right, so now it's called old config, and now we can reboot this, and it's going to come up like it has no configura configuration whatsoever. Also, uh, um, while we're here, ooh, look at the size. It's got 16... So this, um, it says it has 16.6. Let's let me make sure I hover over this real quick. So it says it has 16.6 megabytes free in flash as far as up doing an update. Uh, let's take a look at that in a minute. So let me reboot this. I think it's just boot from here. There we go. So it's going to boot up. And uh, in a moment, hopefully it'll be... Uh, Good to go. All right, so while that boots, let me talk with you about the other pieces that we'd want to have in place. This is the Cisco Feature Navigator, and it says right here, May 7th, 2020. It's, it's May 6th at, the time, at this moment. So they're going to change it somehow, the Feature Navigator. But this is really important because it can show you uh, where or how, if you're looking for a certain feature, like if you buy a Cisco router on eBay and it's got version 15.2 or 15.1 or a switch, you can find out with the Feature Navigator based on that hardware platform and that version, what features exist. And it have, if it has all the features you want, you're done. You don't really need to go out and get an update. I need the latest and greatest. So that would be a great option to use the feature navigator. And then if you do need to upgrade it, another option is to go to Cisco's site and go to support and downloads. And I just looked at the switch images. And this is a great way where you can find out what the current versions are, the current flavors. And let me bring up a pen. I'm bringing up Epic Pen. I've changed my uh, desktop to share the whole screen that I'm working on. A little bit, a little bit of a change for me, so bear with me. So I have a 3560 eight-port um, compact switch. That's the C model. That's what these are, 
And it shows here that we have IP base, and then there's IP services, and the IP services are gonna have more features in them. And the feature navigator can show you exactly what features those are that the IP base doesn't have. So I know that on this device, the, uh, I gotta sneeze, I'm gonna hold it back, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's coming. Okay, I'll just turn when it happens. Oh man, okay, maybe not. All right, so this October 2007, these are old switches, and so they don't keep, man, they're end of life. They don't sell them, and uh, there's a support date that's gonna end for them as well. So this is the, this looks like, <laughs> hold on one second, let me clear that off. I'm just trying to find the, um, let me, search, let me look for the 1502 flavors as far as what's current. All right, so I'm just doing an update for 1502. And this will refresh. Anyway, this is going to show us the version, the latest and greatest version, which may be a year too old for this switch. And then based on the feature navigator, if we need to update the switch, we could then make the decision based off that. Wow, this is not updating. And I don't know why, but that's okay. Um, so what I discovered is on my switch, it had a version of 1502 uh, was the latest and greatest. And so then you can just, on this page at Cisco, if you have a support agreement for this model of hardware, uh, you could download it or you could use a Google search, which uh, also just search for the exact name and that might give you success as well. Anytime you download software though, be very, very careful about where the source you get it from and all those things to be careful about. All right. Um, oh, here's the password recovery page. I guess I did have it open. Oh, here it is again. Okay, so we did the patch recovery. Let's go back to our switch and take a look. So it reloaded and it's asking, saying, hey, I'm brand new here. Do you wanna, uh, do you wanna enter the initial configuration dialog? I'm gonna say no. And then I'm gonna take my favorite document uh, with notepad. I think I may have it open. A lot of tabs open, notepad. There we go. I called it iOS, ah, oh, nuts. Notepad, I call it iOS defaults, that's what I called it. All right, so I have a whole bunch of commands that I would traditionally put on a, a device, so I'm just gonna copy those, right click, go into privilege mode, and do a paste, and I'm gonna call this guy, oh, okay, I'll show you that error message in a moment, we'll talk about that. I'm gonna call this SW, let's call him SW3-8P for eight ports. <laughs> All right, there we go. And right here, uh, where it said this command didn't work, that's because this feature, this version of iOS doesn't support IPv6 unicast routing. Uh, otherwise, it would have taken that command. So if we want to do a show ver, here's the version of software, it's 12.2. It's IP base, not, enter, not uh, IP services. And so it's gonna be more limited. So if we wanted to update this, we would download the correct image for this platform. And then what we could do is, let's do a ping to one. Oh, let's give it an IP address. That'd be a good idea. So I'm gonna take the first port, config t interface fa zero slash one. I'm gonna say no switch port, which makes it a layer three port. I'm gonna do a, it's already up. I'm gonna do an IP address. Oh, it just went down. Uh, it's not plugged in yet. IP address 192.168.1. Mm, I'm gonna use 61 with a 24-bit mask. All right, we're having fun now. So it's got an IP address, it's a layer three interface. Now I'm gonna physically plug it into my network. So I'm gonna take a, taking a cable and I'm plugging in, I'll show you here on the big screen. There we go. So I'm gonna plug it into port FA0 slash one and then we'll verify I'm on the right port and then we have access via the network to manage this bad boy. All right, back to the screen. Okay, so it just says it came up. We'll just show interface status. And sure enough, it's a routed interface, hence the routed and no VLAN identification. And it is, it says connected. So we're also connected. So let me, um, I'm gonna get off my console port here because my console port helps it. When I plug in my console to this router, the, uh, the emulator and the serial interface for the USB, Sometimes it, it causes uh, butters. Go ahead. Disconnect that all the way. So it's no longer connected. So this session is dead. And then we'll open up a new Telnet session through Putty. 
silver and putty, and I've got 8P, and let me go ahead and load that. I'm going to change the address to 61, and then I'll, I'll change the name to switch2, and I will save that, and then I will load it and open it. All right. Oh, switch three. All right, <laughs> I'll have to rename that in Putty. So now we're connected via Telnet to the uh, IP address of 190, well, to show users. No, don't, don't fail on me now. Uh, restart session, there we go. Show users. So I'm currently connected on VTY line one, coming in from my computer's IP address at dot one dot two fifty four. Now, if we wanted to upgrade the software on this, we do a show uh, version. Well, let's just do a, a DAR. So it says we have 16.6 bytes free. Um, and let me see how big the image is that I, I downloaded for the Catalyst switch, because if the image is too big, we can set up FTP. And what I did was I set up a, an FTP server. And it is somewhere close here. Let me FileZilla. If it wasn't open, I'll bring it now. So here's FileZilla. And I just downloaded FileZilla. I went into user accounts. I set up a user called Bob. I specified the folder. I went to my downloads folder where that, that new image is. And uh, away we go. So I've got a file server, FTP server. I, you can also do a TFTP, but sometimes that's a little slower, believe it or not, <laughs> than FTP. So I've got the file server set up and I pointed it for Bob to my downloads folder. Let me get that out of the way. And let me go to, uh, let me go grab the file name from downloads folder. I have a lot of files in there. Let me just copy it real quick. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm also gonna put it into a notepad document right here. So there's the actual file name. It's in my downloads folder and my FileZilla server is set up acting as an FTP server. I also, just for grins, turned off my firewall services on this PC that I'm sitting at. That way I can make sure I have reachability. Let's do a quick ping to uh, 192.168.1.254, right? That's, that's the 3560 connected to our pinging this PC I'm sitting at with FileZilla. So the challenge is that file, it's, I think it's bigger it's, it's bigger than what we have space for in Flash. So we have a couple options. This is a directory. So the 3560 image is in a directory, a folder. Let's go in there. We'll do a CD flash colon whack C35 <laughs> and great. So we just change directories into that folder and we'll do a DIR flash. And it's showing us, yeah, it's just that one. Oh, and then we have a whole folder for HTML as well. And we could delete the HTML folder. I'm not sure how much space it'll give us. Let's just try it though. Let's do a delete. Uh, uh, recursive, flash, colon. And I'm gonna use context sensitive help here. Flash colon, I wanna work in the present working directory I'm in. And then I want to go ahead and do HTML. Uh, is it going to like that? HTML, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay, great, it's taking it. I'm going to do a control shift six. Uh, all right, I'm going to hit enter for all those. I should have done a force, and I think that would have just done it without having to prompt me for every one of them. All right. Wow, a lot of files. So they're using some type of web services for some functionality. And those images were sitting here on the uh, on the router flash in this folder. Oh my gosh! Oh, uh, so so slash recursive slash force. I think would have just done it without asking us any questions. And uh, oh my gosh, Contr Control Shift Six is not taking me out of that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another session because I don't want to continue there. So I'll go to Putty, <laughs> and I'll go back to that switch. I guess I called it two. Yeah, so that's the same switch and do a DIR and let's do a um, CD flash colon and we'll go into that folder called C3560.
and Durflash. Oh, Durflash colon. All right, and this time I'm gonna um, just wipe out the whole HTML thing. So delete, flash rec uh, recursive, flash force, HTML. All right, DI, uh, DIR flash, yeah, that did it. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that other window because I'm done there. Yes, all right, so let's do a DAR. Okay, now it's got 19, uh, see here, 19 meg free. So my image is like 16 or 17, and so now we can go ahead and copy it over if we want to the Flash. The other option is also, because this is a version of Flash that our, our image that loads itself, I believe, into memory, we could actually delete this image right now and then just completely start with the new one. Now the problem here is if we delete the image, and then we have a problem. <laughs> then there's no iOS image. We have to go to Raman and do another option for copying the image over. But I think uh, in the interest of just because it's a new device and nobody's really relying on it right now, I'm going to kill it too. So I'm going to do a delete of flash C3. And I'll hit tab C. Why isn't it tabbing out for me? Flash 35. Huh. Okay, hold on a second. C, 35. There we go. All right, so it wanted the slash. And enter. And yes, to confirm. Oh, oh, it's a directory. It's a directory. Hold on a second. Okay, because I specified the slash from going from the root. So let's do this. <laughs> oh my gosh, the real world. Uh, D-I-R flash colon. All right, and what I want to do is this. I want to do a cd flash colon now dir flash with a colon. All right, I'm getting rid of that whole directory. So delete <laughs> slash force slash recursive, and then we'll do a c flash c3 tab. Boom, there we go. Done, all right, and we'll do a DIR, flash. Shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. All right, um, great, so there's no operating system. We do not wanna reboot real quick. We wanna make sure we upload a new image first. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a copy, FTP to flash. Address of host, 192.168.1.254. Source file, I'm gonna go ahead and take that right here. Copy and right click paste. Destination, same name. Oh, I need to log in. Uh, I need to log in as Bob. FTP. Hmm, how do we, there's a way to set the password for the FTP. FT, hmm, oh, what is that? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There's a way to set the username and password for FTP and it's escaping me what it is. Let's go another route then. Let's do uh, this, copy, FTP. Uh, mm, let's do this, FTP colon whack whack, one nine. I think we put the username first. I think that's how I remember it, Bob at Cisco. I think that's the username and password. That is the username and password I have on the FTP server. Uh, slash, and then is, I'll put that file name in, space, slash. All right, destination, yes. Oh, and oh, 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 oh. oh, I forgot to put the IP address in. Hold on a second. Oh, uh, what is the syntax? What is the syntax for that? FTP, oh, maybe I should put the IP address in first. All right, my apologies for this. 192.168.1.254 slash. No, that's part of the, that's part of the, um, that's gonna be part of the, um, part of the URL. Okay, I can't remember how to do this. I'm gonna Google it. Don't make me Google it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let me bring up a new page. Set. 
FTP username Cisco. Uh, here we go right there, setting the default FTP and password in Cisco. I'll take that. I'll take that for 100, Bob. All right. Oh, IP FTP username. Okay, we can do that. So thank you, Google. And thank you, Brian's blog at brianlarson.blogspot.com. Thank you for that perfect answer in my moment of need. Go back and let's specify the username and password. I think you can embed it there, but I do not remember how to do that. So we'll do a config T, IP FTP username. Bob and IP FTP password is Cisco. Boom. Copy FTP to flash. And it's remembering that IP address from previous. Remembering the name previous. And the destination is that. Incorrect login or password. Bob. Oh. oh I put, um, one more time. IP address. Source. Destination. It's trying to open. All right, my bad. All right, here we go. <laughs> Copy FTP colon whack whack 192.168.1.254 for the source slash file name space slash colon. Look at that, it's still trying to do Bob. Well, let's take a look at my TFTP server, my, my FileZilla server. Oh, is it not running? That could be a problem if it's not running. Oh, it's not running. That would explain why we're not logging on. Okay, one more time, FileZilla. And here it is, it had turned off. All right, so there it is. <laughs> and we'll give this another shot. All right. There we go. So FileZilla, I guess, timed out and it stopped. Oh, there's an error. Login or password incorrect. Uh, let's check that out. Let's do a show run. Include. And I need to reconnect here. Oh my gosh, what a nightmare. Not that bad. Uh, show run. Include. FTP. FTP user Bob. FTP password Cisco. All right, let's take a look here. I've got my users, Bob. I'm going to make sure it's password Cisco. Bob and Cisco. And I'm just going to check his folder again. Shared folders. Downloads folder. That looks good. All right, let's give another shot. Copy, FTP, flash. Source file name. I have that in Notepad. There it is. Copy, paste. Destination same. Oh, there we go. So I maybe I had set up a different password, but there we go. So now it's copying. And thank goodness, because we wiped out the previous version of the iOS. And so I'm putting in 3560 IP services. K9 has a few more features, version 15.0. Um, and there we go. All right, so that had a few more challenges than I was expecting. So in this video, what I wanted to walk you through was if you get new gear, what do we do for password recovery? And the answer is you connect a console cable to it. You get the online doc from Cisco that says how to do password recovery on that device and simply follow it. Once you've recovered and you've gotten into the system, you don't really need to save the older config that they had. You can just get rid of it if you want to completely and start your own. I put my favorite commands in there, and then we took a look at the Cisco site for that platform to see what the version of software was that was the most current. And we can use Feature Navigator to verify what features we need. And then after obtaining that software, if you have a, a contract with Cisco, you can download it. Uh, I found that Google is sometimes helpful in those needs as well. So then we, I put on the FTP server. I used FileZilla, which closed in the background earlier. That probably caused us some grief. And I also set up the IP FTP username and password for Bob and Cisco, so it'd work. I did a copy from FTP to Flash. It asked me for all the details, including the name, and then it's off to the races, and it is still copying. So that might be, that might be, a, be a moment or two before it is completely done. 
Um, but when it's done, because there's no other iOS image on this box, it's not going to have a problem with knowing, oh, which iOS, iOS image do I boot from? It'll boot from the only one there. Uh, so you can also set the environment variable for which iOS image to boot from if you want to as well. That's an option. So that's what I wanted to do in this video. I didn't realize I'd have so many complications because I forgot how to set the FTP username and password. Uh, also, you can do TFTP, and I tried that as well. Um, the, the TFTP took forever. It was just like, ah, oh, it's UDP. It should be quicker, right? But the, error, the, the checking that's happening, I guess, the application layer, making sure it's all getting there, simply seem to take uh, an excessive amount of time. So I, I got a little TFTP server and tried that, but it was like, I don't know, half hour? <laughs> Where this, I think is almost done. So if you wanna hang out with me for a minute, we can actually watch this finish. Hey, there you go. So it's just finished. And now if we do a DIR, a flash with a colon, there's our new image right there. And, uh, <laughs> This loss of connectivity is just all me. Let me restart that session. And uh, let's reboot it. Uh, I'm gonna do a WR. That's good. Save our config. Any changes we made. Uh, let's do a show VLAN brief. Oh, look at that. Nobody, nobody look at that. So the, the VLAN database is stored in a separate file on Flash. And so those are still the VLANs from the previous um, people who had this switch. So what I'm gonna... <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a config T and I'll say a no VLAN two through a thousand. That's almost two through a thousand. There we go. Do a WR and show VLAN brief. All right, there we go. So I've got my fast ethernet interfaces two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight uh, are in VLAN one gig zero slash one. It has a, an SFP slot and also a RJ45 connector for ethernet for its gigabit. Um, and those are all just at their, their defaults and I'm plugged into FA0 slash one as a routed interface. Show, uh, show interface status. All right, yep. And that's how we're connected right there. If we do a who, who are you, who are you? So anyway, I'm just connecting via Telnet at the moment and I could get more secure as we go forward. Also, I think I have no exec timeout forever. So on the VTY lines in a lab environment, you might want to set it to um, a VTY timeout of maybe 60 minutes or something less than forever. That way, in case you're connecting over and over again, you'll uh, have some ports that free up after a period of time. Or if you have console access, you can always just directly connect there as well. So now if we do a show version and I'll hit space for a few times here. Let me make this bigger. And so there's the version that is currently Oh, wait a sec here. Who are we connected to? Switch three. Is this the image we just reloaded? It still says I, IP base K9. Oh, wait a sec, hold the phone, hold the phone. We did reboot this, right? Or did we not? Oh, we, I don't think we rebooted it. So that's the old image that's currently running. Let's do a reboot. Reload, restart, <laughs> jump, go. And then once it reloads, It'll reload with that image, and then we'll be uh, good to go. All right. Yeah, I, I thought I reloaded it, but now that I think about it, it would have taken quite a bit of time, and I didn't do it. All right, so thanks for joining me and this little uh, overview of what to do when you get a brand new device that you bought uh, on eBay or wherever, including password recovery and getting an updated image if you need to, and also Feature Navigator to find out what features exist on that device that allow you to do the practice you want to do. Um, I'm also going to do a video on what happens if you delete the iOS image and accidentally the machine reboots and what do you do then? So I'll do a separate video on that. So if you're studying for CCNA, go ahead and click on like on this video as one of your resources you can use to help uh, if you get new gear. If you are studying for your CCNA, please click on subscribe. We'd love to give you alerts and notifications when new videos come out. We usually have uh, up to three every week. We also put those in the master playlist. So it's been great having you. I appreciate you joining me and I'll see you in the next live event. Thanks everybody.